Hey, wow. You got a lot of shots to develop? No. Oh, bummer. Well, I'll catch you later. If the brain is processing 400 billion bits of information and then our awareness is only on 2,000, that means reality is happening in the brain all the time. It's receiving that information, and yet we haven't integrated it. The eyes are like the lens, but the tape that's really seeing is the back of the brain. It's called the visual cortex. It's right back here. It's like this camera and it's tape. Did you know that the brain imprints what it has the ability to see? Now, this is important. For example, this camera is seeing a lot more around me than what is here because it is, has no objection and no judgment. The only movie that's playing in the brain is what we have the ability to see. So is it possible our eyes, our cameras see more than what our brain has the ability to consciously project? Well, the way our brain is wired up, we only see what we believe is possible. Um, we match patterns that already uh, exist within ourselves through conditioning. So uh, a wonderful story that I believe is true is that when the Indians, the Native American Indians uh, on the Caribbean islands saw Columbus's ships approaching, they couldn't see them at all because it was so unlike anything they had ever seen before, they couldn't see it. When Columbus's armada landed in the Caribbean, none of the natives were able to see the ships even though they existed on the horizon. The reason that they never saw the ships was because they had no knowledge in their brains or no experience that clipper ships existed. So the shaman starts to notice that there's ripples out in the ocean, but he sees no ship, but he starts to wonder what's causing the effect. So every day he goes out and looks and looks and looks, and after a period of time, he's able to see the ships. And once he sees the ships, he tells everybody else that ships exist out there because everybody trusted and believed in him. They saw them also. producing machines. We create the effects of reality all the time. We always perceive something after reflection in the mirror of memory. <gasps> as far as whether or not we're just living in a big holodeck or not, it's a question that we don't necessarily have a good answer to. I think this is a big philosophical problem that we have to deal with in terms of what science can say about our world because we are always the observer in science. So we are still always constrained by what is ultimately coming into, our, uh, into the human brain that allows us to see and perceive the things that we do. So it is conceivable that all of this really is just a great illusion that we have no way of, of really getting outside of to see what is really out there. Your brain doesn't know the difference between what's taking place out there and what's taking place in here. There is no out there, out there, independent of what's going on in here. You okay? I heard you scream earlier. Was it another dream? You were an Indian, watching Columbus's ship materialize out of thin air. Wow. And this medicine man kept hitting you. Cool. That's, hey, maybe it was a past life or a parallel reality or a future life. Got weird. 
Or maybe that dream was trying to tell you the truth. I guess it just depends on what you think is real. Maybe you should try different anxiety pills. My pills are fine, okay? Thank you. Well, I have to go get dressed. Mm. I hope you feel better, Amanda. God, Amanda, I could be such an asshole. There actually are choices in the direction of how a life can go that are contingent upon small level quantum effects not being washed out. First of all, let's talk about the subatomic world. And then we'll talk about what it's telling us about reality. The first thing I want to tell you about the subatomic world is it's totally a fantasy created by mad physicists trying to figure out what the heck is going on when they do these little experiments. By little experiments, I mean big energy in little spaces and little pieces of time. It gets pretty nutty at that realm of things. And so subatomic physics was invented to try to figure that all out. We need a new science down there. It's called quantum physics, and it is subject to a whole range of debatable hypotheses, thoughts, feelings, intuitions as to what the heck is really going on. Matter is not what we have long thought it to be. Uh, to the scientist, matter has always been thought of as sort of the ultimate in that which is static and predictable. Within all the atoms and molecules, all the space within that, the particles take up an insignificant amount of the, of the volume of an atom or molecule, the fundamental particles. The rest of it is vacuum. What seems to happen is that particles appear and disappear all the time. So where do they go when they're not here? Now, that question is tricky. I'm gonna give you two answers. Answer number one, they go into a, an alternative universe where the people in that universe are asking the same question about those particles when they come into our universe. They say, where do they go? <laughs> There's a great mystery called the mystery of the direction of time. There's a certain sense in which the fundamental laws of physics that we have don't make any dis interesting distinction, say, between past and future. Um, for example, it's a puzzle from the standpoint of the fundamental laws of physics. Why, should, why we should be able to um, remember the past um, um, and not have the same kind of epistemic access to the future. It's a puzzle from the standpoint of these laws why we should think something like, by acting now, we can affect the future but not the past. These things, that we have a different kind of epistemic access to the past and the future, that we have a different kind of control by acting now over the future than we do over the past, these things are so fundamental to the way we experience the world that um, um, that it seems to me not to be curious about them is to be, you know, three quarters of the way to being dead. Wanna shoot some hoops? No, you don't have to be like that. Come on and play. Look. He likes you. Don't you have time for a little one-on-one? -on -one? How long has it been since you played? Come on. You got the ball. Take a shot. No, 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 my lady. Not from there. It's out of bounds. You gotta be on the court to be in play. Welcome to Duke Reginald's Court of Unending Possibilities. <laughs>